Good morning everybody and hello once again to my humble abode. Today I would like to go and cover some of the botany aspects of breeding flowers. But the very first thing I want to do is I want to go and investigate one of the machines I forgot last time. And that's this one. This is the tile worker. And the tile worker takes mortar. And the recipe for mortar, let's have a quick look, is very simple. Is this one. So it's simply one gravel surrounded with four clay makes six mortar. But we also need in here these items which are ceramic tiles. And let's go and find out how to make ceramic tiles. The first thing you need is clay and some colour. So let's have a look. Let's first of all make some colour. Here we've got some colour in a garden. Now this garden here is uh, a botany soil. So I can take some one flower, and in fact I can also put in its place another one. And as I put that, it now becomes a botany flower. So here I've got two different colours, in fact. Let's just take all of those. Oh, I can I not pick them all up? Because oh, they're all different, of course. Let's just put them in here for the time being. It goes up there, I want it down here. Let's take these two and pick up these three. In fact, let's put one back down there, we can get right. That's plenty. So, what you do with the flowers, you can put it in the crafting grid like this, and you get yellow pigment for yellow ones. And oh, there was the other one, let's do two of those. Of course, you don't have to put it on the crafting table. And take a uh, Let's get a third one. And let's take a, an alum, which I think is really uh, dandelion, something like that. And that gives me some light slate pigment. And then I combine those pigments with clay. Now, what I've got in here is a bit, I've got too much of stuff in here, but let's just take out, say, these. There's some clay here. And what you do is you can do this with put clay like this, and then put your pigment in one of the cor in this corner. So here we have, for example, makes yellow clay from yellow pigment in three clays. The next one was the uh, light slate. Put the light slate down here, and now I have light slate clay. So obviously you're going to need quite a few different flowers and different. For the, for the different colours and that's really the purpose of today's episode now what you can't you can't use this clay you have to go and cook it so here's a so here's a redstone furnace so I can put those in into here and they will then come out as from yellow clay to yellow ceramic blocks and I'll get three of those out of that in fact let's put the the slate one in here so it comes straight through And if you remember from the previous episode, you can go along to the tile worker and now put the slate in here and you can get a pattern. Now, obviously what I want to show is rotation possibly. That's for look, that's a good one. And if you want to have it purple on the outside, you can have it purple on the outside. So let's take two of those and place those down. Now, you need the car carpentry hammer again so I'll take my mastery carpenter I want to right click on it it rotates it in a clockwise direction now if I shift right click on it it will rotate it in the direction I'm facing and you can also do it from the end of course so you can also get some quite interesting and whizzy patterns and that's really the tile worker and you can combine anything you like different patterns exactly the same as the woodworker and the glass worker you've got all these different patterns you can choose from from designs and emblems bars squares and stripes so there we have that one now today I'd like to go over and have a look here here I've got a flower bed in fact it's actually a garden. 
I'm just gonna look, can I just have to dig up this nasty thing over here and suffer the consequences of a bit of weather for a few seconds. And this garden here, in fact, is a multi farm from forestry. And this is a small one, so it's three by three. Like that. And the, you can find out how the recipe for multi farms works. But in this particular case, it's slightly different. Because instead of doing um, tubes, I'm using insulated tubes. So, so here we've got some copper insulated tubes. And here I've got some iron tubes, bronze tubes, tin tubes. And you combine those with these items. So you've got hardened clay, stone, sandstone. In fact, there's a lot more, depending on what you want to achieve. So in my case, I want to have, uh, say, a normal unfertilized or fertilized gardens. So what you do is you take your, your soldering iron here and you take some insulated, I don't want the insulated ones, I want the non-insulated ones. So let's just take these three. In fact, I'll keep them in the same order. Because tin makes uh, acidic ground, bronze makes neutral ground, and iron makes uh, alkaline. And these three here make damp, normal or dry ground fat flower bed really and if I'm using copper insulated which is actually my favorite it makes uh, none of those it makes it sort of neutral but without having a forcing it to be neutral so you can then change it manually and I'll show you how to do that first of all so as well now one more step we need to do is we can make some um, mulch. Now to make mulch what I'm going to do here in fact I think I need to go back to the yes I'll do that first. I'll go back to the genetics which is in fact over here because what I need to do is to make some uh, cases. So here I've got a, a portable tank and all you need to do to make cases is to take a crafting table like this and put in it beeswax now we've got tons of beeswax because I've been making uh, all the bees so there's 64 cases of here and then what we can then do with these is to fill those with water in fact let me get rid of some of those so we don't need all of them do we in fact we've got plenty of them already oops bring everything down let's just use up these last ones here because we don't need the beeswax for anything else that's 16 actually 16 is just fine what do I do with my, oh yeah so then we go and fill these with water which we can do by simply right clicking on the portable tank like this and of course, because I've got no space in my inventory, they're going to get, drop on the floor. But it doesn't matter very much. I'll just use them all up and then pick them up. Oh, should I should have another one. Yes. I'm going to get that one as well. There we go. So now I've got 16 filled tanks. And what you can then do with those is to combine those with bark. And bark is actually one of the byproducts of the. Um, lumber mill. One of the things Bart makes is sawdust and bark. So what you do is you put that in the middle and you simply do the same pattern as before. So I think that's the way. And that makes mulch. So we've got nine mulch there. And mulch is one of the things we can use to change the soil composition in in the garden. So let's go back to the garden and have a look what I'm trying to say, show. And of course you need to cover the garden. So here I've just simply got a glass pattern exact matching the sort of the multi-farm layout. And as you come along here, for example, here you can see 
different colours of garden. Now let's have a look. If I show you this here, this is the soil meter. If I right click on there with the soil meter, it tells me that this is moist, a flower bed. Moisture is normal and it's pH is alcohol, alkaline. And this one here is the same, pH is normal. So the colour represents uh, the sort of levels of acidity and alkaline. But if I take here, for example, and put in it ash, I think ash is the one that makes it alkaline, so you don't see any colour changes. If I use sulphur, that'll make it alkal acid and it goes red. And then, I think those are absolute. If I make use wood pulp, yes, wood pulp turns it alkaline. I'm not sure exactly how to get it back to being normal. And mulch, mulch again makes it acidic. So those are your four different products you've got. So you've got wood, wood pulp, which is a byproduct of uh, all sorts of things. Actually, in this particular case, it was from the carpenter, I think. Sulphur, ash, and mulch. Now, let's go back and have a look at these tubes because I didn't finish that off, did I? So, in here, we've got an integrated circuit board with different tubes on it. So, what I want to try and show you now is the tubes. First of all, we'll show you how to make the tubes. So, for example, bronze will make two bronze will make. Uh, you let it out like this, it doesn't really matter that much. Now we also need in here, I've forgotten to take it out. In fact, I don't need everything I've got on me now, so I don't need these. I need some stone. Or I need some hardened clay, or I need some sandstone. So as you then put your two tubes here, if I put stone in the middle, it'll make a a bronze insulated tube, smooth stone. If I do this one, it'll do the same, but this time it'll be sandstone. And this time it'll be hardened clay. Now, hardened clay makes damp, sandstone makes dry, and smooth stones make normal. And what you can do is you can make some normal, like this. So, what have we got now? We've got bronze tin and iron. So let's just go back into here. I think I've got copper smooth stone in here. What you then can do, is you can take your integrated circuit board, your soldering iron, and your tubes. So You right click your soldering iron in, in the air, and you don't put your insulated, uh, integrated circuit board in yet. You change this first of all to farm or managed farm, manual farm or managed and you can put your tubes in. So if I put a copper tube in here with... that's just a fertilised garden. If I'd used, I think it's cobblestone instead of smooth stone, it would be an unfertilised garden. If I put bronze in here, it'll make a neutral fertilised garden. If I use that with um, iron, it would be alkaline. If I used it with tin, it would be um, acidic. So that's how it works. And then all you do is you put your tube in here, your circuit in there, and you get this layout. In fact, in the one I've got here, I've got a slightly different layout. And the way you then change these, if you want to change them, is you can simply drop into into these places here. Let's take this dirt out, I don't need so much of that. Um, The items. So, for example, I could drop in here some wood pulp. I don't want to put all of them in anyway because that would probably kill a lot of the flowers. Or I can drop in some mulch. I don't need that one. I don't need this really. Let's put that out of the way. Or I could drop in some sulphur. And of course, the last one was ash. And this one here is actually weed killer. You don't need the weed killer for this far, uh, farm because we're using it's a farm, and it manages uh, the weed, the weeds themselves. We don't need to worry about that. But you could use this on a normal pa pa uh, ground, 
I know what you do is to um, just right click it on the ground and then the weeds just die. And here we've got fertilizer. The fertilizer is made from exactly the same way as it is before um, for the normal for the normal man, uh, multi farm. So quickly let's have a look at the recipe for that. It's sort of like different types of sand around concentrated compound gives you six fertilizer. You can also use it like this ash around concentrated or apartheid. You can do like this and the concentrated is made I forget, I'm not sure. Oh, it's actually made from magic bees. So it's a byproduct of bees. And that's the crafting. You can do shapeless crafting like this. And that's just the carpenter. And that's it. So that's how you make fertilizer. So that's we really like one of those uh, around. So if I look so I can do that. It would be like that layout, and you would then produce a, some fertilizer like this. Well, I've got plenty of fertilizer, and there's plenty of fertilizer in here too. It doesn't use it up at all quickly. It seems to last a very long time. Let's put that over there. And the other thing you can do, of course, is you, for the farm you need sort of normally you need. I, I use stones bricks. The easiest way to make stone bricks actually, rather you can use a chisel but what's the point, you can simply put them like that and you get, for each one of those you get a stone brick. So we've got plenty of stone bricks because the farm is actually huge, it takes quite a large area. And there we go again. Now what you'll also notice, all you have to do is plant flowers and leave them and they will then change. You can see here I've got different types of coloured flowers. These are also tulips by the look of these and these are, it doesn't tell you, I should really tell you when you look at it what the flower is. So what you can then do, in fact let's just go downstairs again because I should put this stuff back. As I don't, I don't need the soldering iron and I don't need the circuit board and I don't need the tubes and I don't need these either actually I do want those because I want to show you what no nope, I don't need these but the next thing I do need is this the field kit the field kit Actually, what you can do with the field kit is come along here. You see this one here is all light grey. Uh, I suppose it's bluey, isn't it? So that means it's alkaline. So you'll see that different types of flowers are sort of do better in the alkaline. So this particular case of these flowers. Let's just take one of those. And then take... Uh, let's take two. You see this one here is obviously not doing too well. It's a strange sort of pale colour. So you then can take the field kit here and then right click that and the flowers you picked you can see you can pick it in here so this is an allium beige dull pink dark olive stem and its age is actually 10 so it's, it's been done uh, it's sort of had 10 offspring or 10 generations its temperature is normal but it's happy to go in both directions once its moisture is normal and again for both directions once and its pH is normal and its fertility to two which basically means when it dies it produces two more flowers and then you can also look here so you see this, this sort of chart it tells you the species the temperature tolerance is both one humidity uh, pH tolerance is both one stem color is dark olive if it doesn't have any effects it's got humidity tolerance is both one there was one here about nectar's average Lifespan's long, primary colour is beige, uh, fertility is normal, and secondary colour is dull pink. So if I now take this flower and convert that to a colour, it will should give me a, a beige uh, colour pigment. 
and this is the same here we've got different ones so for example primary color is gold normal and coral is its secondary color so we can simply put this stamp back here and as you'll see where I took them from in this case it didn't move fill it up I can put one in there so this one was the beige one wasn't it so if I now take this and you see I get beige pigment so that's how you get all these different pigments and of, and of course you can cross breed flowers in the same way as you can cross breed bees or trees if you come along here now here I've got an alvary and in the alvary I've got uh, one leaden drone where there's no print I think the Queen's probably disappeared uh, Prince has probably disappeared into this chest here it has she has let's put her back in here in fact they come out of here and it should be blacklisted leaden prints and leaden drone so I'm not quite sure how she got out so I'll put her back in and then this will start to produce and here I've got sieves you'll see in here I've got different pollens in fact I was hoping to show you the flower pollens which I don't seem to have these are all tree pollens they should actually end up in here but they have got some flower pollen in here I don't need this pigment with me do I so here we've got tulip pollen which is pink and light mauve with a dark green stem and then here we have different types of flowers there's a cornflower pollen and then we've got a dandelion and we've got a tulip that's a white Minecraft tulip that's a botany tulip uh, let's put it back there and here we have got dandelion pollen yellow hill cherry pollen that's a tree one don't want that one a common elder that's also a tree but that's also a tree so it's picking up both trees and flower pollens and they actually are coming also from here as well this is a an industrial apiary with a an electrum drone and it's produced it's got a sieve and it's got maximum production and automation and that will then be producing for me the electrum nuggets here you see, look, there's one plough that's died. It just pick, I didn't pick it up, but the farm did, and it will replace it with something else. Here's another one that's just died off, and you'll see here's a, another little germling. And here we have the same thing. This time it's picked up tulip pollen of light grey, different types of tulip pollen. So then you can take these flowers. So let's take this. Did I pick up a tulip? No. Let's take up that one and that one what you can do you can right click on those or you can do it the same way as you did it with bees so let's go over to the cold bees is where I've got the um, where I've got the genetic stuff for which is here I'm not sure what combinations I need but for example in here if I put in say a tulip I need it in the bottom pollen has to go at the top you'll see here a tulip and dandelion pollen will produce a cornflower so I could click the cornflower what if I, if I try changing that to a dandelion it probably doesn't work with dandelion that's probably have to put dandelion here and cornflower doesn't work tulip produces also a cornflower so you click it and it produces one cornflower sky blue and that screams them so that's how that works it's the same as the bees and here I've actually got different uh, a little garden and you'll see the shiny sort of color colorful speckles in the in the soil that actually is um, weed killer so here we've got lots of, I think actually these could even be um, cornflowers there are some cornflowers here this looks like a tulip let's have a look what it is I think that was the one yes it's a tulip it's a bit of a let's put the cornflower down here and the cornflower will tell me what type of ground it likes so 
what I didn't show you is the effect here. This will be dry because it's beside sand. You see moisture dry, pH normal and soil type is that. So anything that likes a dry environment will survive, thrive here. And this is green, which is just simply neutral, but it's also dry. And this is soil, and this is flower bed. And the difference is I put more fertilizer over here than I did here. I just simply use the trowel to pick up the, to dig it up. And here I put fertilizer on it. Let's go back again to the, to the farm or the flower bed. Takes a few seconds to load up. There she goes. And you'll see here I've put water blocks. And beside the water blocks, and it will cover one, as you can see this whole area here is damp. And it tells you here if I want to right click it. So it's flower bed, moisture, damp, and pH is normal. Here with the sand, it's dry. What I was doing here was just playing with it myself. This is outside the farm area, the managed farm area. And you can then plant your own flowers in here and see what happens. For trial, trial purposes, so you can then simply right click this with some pollen as well. And that will hopefully produce a mutation. Well. As you see it's quite colourful and as you pick each one of these flowers, this one here for example is bluebells, it's biomer plenty no use because biomer plenty don't work, it's just minecraft flowers that work. And you'll see the dryness, you can get all sorts of combinations, you don't have to do much work and you've even got the butterflies landing on the flowers. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed this. Bye for now.